I'm walking through the middle of nowhere in Iceland and I noticed something kind of crazy. The internet speed is insanely fast. I'm uploading videos faster than I would in some major cities. It turns out Iceland turned to China and implemented Huawei for 5G technology. But hold on, this is the same technology by Huawei that is banned in the US, Australia, and other parts of Europe. Because critics say the Chinese government can use it for spying. And many are encouraging other countries to ban Huawei's 5G as well. So why on earth would Iceland move forward with Huawei? I ask a young farmer and he tells me this. At some point they were afraid to be spied on, but after we found out that the US had been spying on most of Europe without Europe's consent, and I think a lot of people are like, yeah, if you, what is the difference between US spying on us and China spying on us? After we found out that US has been spying on a lot of, of European leaders without their consent, a lot of Icelanders calmed a bit down and were like, yeah, okay, maybe China is not so much different. <laughs> Super fast internet, so. Right now, some countries are banning Chinese tech companies while others are going all in and using them. And it's creating a modern day technology war between the US and China. See, 5G is not just about being able to upload your Instagram story in the middle of a hike in Iceland. Yes, 5G is insanely fast. It can offer up to 10 gigs in a second at peak download speeds. But the key of 5G is this. It's essential as we move towards smart cities, driverless cars, and even surgeries done remotely. And the decisions that governments make right now could have repercussions for decades to come. See, imagine China does have access to Huawei's power and controls, and a city in Iceland is reliant on its technology for its smart city. In theory, if it wanted to, China could do harm by causing havoc on the self-driving cars. Oh, China has firmly opposed the ban that some European Union countries have slapped on Chinese telco giant Huawei. Should Huawei play a role in Europe's 5G future? France will not join the US and UK in banning Huawei. Well, the government, of course, with support from Labour, has blocked 5G. So what happens when the two biggest economies go head to head in a war that's not really visible to the eye? This is a story about tech, trade, and national security. You probably use free public Wi-Fi a lot. It's convenient. But apparently this can open us up to a lot of problems like identity theft or data leaks. A hacker can literally position themselves between your device and the public Wi-Fi to eavesdrop on your traffic and steal your credit card numbers and passwords. So I recently started using the Aura app. Aura's privacy assistant removes all your data from mining sites, and they even send you automatic updates when there is suspicious activity. With its virtual public network, you can connect to any public Wi-Fi without fear. Since you're a viewer of my channel, you can get a free 14-day trial, and they'll do a scan, and you can see right now if your personal information has been leaked online or not. You'll find out instantly. Click below to get your free trial and stay away from hackers. Now back to the video. You know Huawei as the Chinese tech giant. It's known for its smartphones, networking equipment, and telecom software. And in 2018, the US government accused Huawei of being a security risk, saying that the Chinese government could use its equipment to spy on Americans. Now, Huawei has always denied these allegations, but the US government has imposed a number of sanctions on the company, like a ban on US companies selling components and software to Huawei. It's also why I see Huawei stores all over Europe and Latin America right now, but never in the US. This ban on Huawei has had a major impact impact on the company. See, its smartphone sales have fallen a lot, and the company has been forced to scale back its research and development efforts. In fact, at one point, it was the most popular selling smartphone in the world. It took over Apple and Samsung one quarter in 2020. But today, it's not even in the top five. And this ban had a ripple effect on the global tech industry. See, many US tech companies have been forced to cut their ties with Huawei, and they were relying on Huawei for components and software, and some even had to lay off employees as a result of it. But the Huawei ban is a controversial one. Some people argue that it is necessary to protect US national security, but others say it's unfair and counterproductive. Now fast forward to today, where a report came out that Apple's iPhone has been banned in government offices across China. When this news hit, it wiped off millions of dollars off of Apple's share price, many claiming that this was China's payback for its ban on Huawei products and technology. The Chinese government cited security concerns as the the reason for the ban, but many experts believe that it is also a way to promote domestic tech companies. But this ban is a major blow to Apple because China is its third largest market. And it's also a sign of the growing tension between the US and China, but they're doing it through Apple versus Huawei. Now, China's foreign ministry came out later to deny that it issued this ban on foreign phones, but China has increasingly 
emphasize that people use locally made tech products because technology is becoming a national security issue between Beijing and Washington. In 2016, I moved from New York City to Singapore. At the time, you never heard about Chinese tech companies breaking out of China. But within just a few years, two of the four biggest smartphone makers were Chinese. Today, the world's fastest growing social media app is Chinese, TikTok, which is owned by ByteDance, and the Chinese company Xi'an has become one of the biggest fashion brands practically overnight. Huawei is now the world's largest manufacturer of 5G equipment. Huawei, Xiaomi, and ZTE are making huge waves. They offer high quality products at competitive prices, and their products are a lot cheaper than iPhone. But it's not just the consumer products we're talking about here. In 2022, Huawei opened its largest research and development center in the world in Sao Paulo, Brazil. In 2021, Xiaomi opened its first European flagship store in Paris. And in 2020, ZTE signed a deal with the Spanish government to build a 5G network in Spain. Head over to Latin America, these companies now account for a significant share of the smartphone market. In fact, Huawei was the leading smartphone maker in Latin America in 2022. And this is crazy considering that Huawei was relatively unknown in the region just a few years ago. The growth of these companies in Latin America can be attributed to a number of factors, like a large and growing population of young people who are eager to adopt new technologies. They're not brand loyal to Apple or Samsung. And also, these are growing economies economies which just give consumers more disposable income to spend on consumer products. And finally, there's been a lot of heavy investment in marketing and advertising. Xiaomi and Huawei became cool, and Apple has just become out of reach to so many people. Now head over to Europe. In 2022, Huawei was the third leading smartphone vendor in Europe, followed by Xiaomi and ZTE. The growth of these companies in Europe can be attributed to a number of different things. In Europe, you have a large and mature smartphone market. You have tech-savvy customers who are always on the lookout out for the greatest and latest technology devices and competitive prices. Despite concerns over Huawei's ties to the Chinese government, these companies are still very well positioned to keep growing in Latin America and Europe. So in just a few years, China has had this absolute magnificent rise in technology and there is absolutely no stopping it. And none of this happened by accident. The Chinese government has played a key role in supporting the country's tech sector. Through its Made in China 2025 initiative, the government has also provided financial and other kinds of support to Chinese tech companies. But now all of this presents the U.S. with two massive challenges. The first is economically. How can the U.S. remain the world leader in technology with the rapid rate of advancement and growth and innovation coming out of China? And the second one is public security. As smart cities develop, technology is becoming more and more embedded in our society. It's no longer about hacking someone's data from their phone. It becomes much bigger than that. See, self-driving cars could be hacked to crash. Traffic lights could be manipulated to cause congestion or even accidents. Power grids could be shut down, causing blackouts. Public safety systems could be disabled, making it very hard for fire trucks or ambulances to come out during emergencies. Personal data could be stolen from residents like credit card numbers, medical records, and social security numbers. You can start to see why the decision of today's politicians could potentially determine the fate of countries' safety for decades to come. And right now is a pivotal time in what happens next. And it's insanely complicated because it's quite hard to decouple China from the US. I mean, it's just too late. Just look at the world's richest man and his company, Tesla. The drama between Tesla, China, and Elon Musk began in early 2022 when a number of Tesla owners in China complained about their vehicles, sudden braking, and battery fires. These complaints led to a series of investigations by Chinese regulators, and Tesla was forced to recall several thousand cars. Tesla even had to suspend production at its Shanghai factory for a few weeks to address the quality issues. Tesla offered discounts and other incentives to Chinese customers in an effort to win back their trust. But the drama between Tesla and China China continued. In June 2022, Tesla recalled 80,000 cars over software and seatbelt issues. See, the US government is facing a tough choice, how to deal with China's growing power. But American companies have invested heavily in China and they share vital technology with the country. Now, this helps US companies make more money, but it also makes the US more dependent on China. Some people say that the US should still decouple from China, meaning that the two economies
economies should just be separated. But this would be insanely hard and expensive and it would also hurt the US economy. Other critics say that the US needs to maintain a strong presence in China in order to compete with the global economy and the new global order. I mean, just look at how many other countries are using Chinese technology right now. So what is the answer? Can the US be tough on China without hurting its own economy? Well, Elon Musk is a really good example of the dilemma facing US businesses. Because Tesla sells a lot of cars in China, China is the biggest market for Tesla outside of the US. So Musk has to keep the Chinese government happy if he wants to keep selling cars there. And this puts him in a very difficult position because if the US government takes a tough stance on China, it could hurt Tesla's business. But if Musk doesn't stand up to the Chinese government, he could be seen as betraying the US. This is the dilemma facing many businesses right now. And Elon Musk is a man of two faces. In the US, he's been an outspoken critic of the government and a champion of free speech. But in China, where the government has absolute power and does not believe in free speech, Musk is much more careful about what he says. On the 100th anniversary of the Chinese Communist Party last year, Musk tweeted, the economic prosperity that China has achieved is truly amazing. I encourage people to visit and see for themselves. He also praised China's support for new technologies while at one point mocking President Biden's plan to aid the US electric vehicle industry. Musk is not the only American businessman who changes his tune when it comes to China. The CEO of Nike once told investors that Nike is a brand of China and for China. Now, this kind of behavior is understandable, but it also just shows the odds of the US government versus US business. See, Musk himself has said that Tesla has a good relationship with China, but he doesn't endorse everything the Chinese government does. But how can he be sure that Tesla is operating ethically in China if he's not truly willing to speak out against any of the government's wrongdoing? The tech war between the US and China is a big deal, and it might only be getting started. Here are some specific things that could happen next. The US could keep banning Chinese tech companies from operating in the US. The US could also put tariffs on Chinese tech products, and it could invest more in its own tech sector so that it doesn't rely on China so much. Another thing that could happen is China could retaliate by putting tariffs on US tech products or banning US tech companies from even operating in China. China could invest more in its own tech sector so it doesn't rely on the US as much. Another thing that could happen is the two countries could agree to just stop fighting and work together on some things like cybersecurity. Another possibility is that the two countries could keep fighting and it could continue to escalate, which would cost businesses and customers more money, and it could even lead to conflict between the two countries. And finally, the two countries could find a way to stop fighting and work together. This would probably be good for most of us because it would help the global economy grow and it would make it easier for people to develop and innovate in new technology. But it could also put security and personal data in the wrong hands. It's also possible that the two countries will just keep fighting at a low level without any side really winning. So there are a lot of possible scenarios and no one knows what can happen next. But what we do know is that the outcome of this tech war will have a big impact on the global economy and the future of technology. But I want to know, what do you think? Should other countries be as critical as the US is toward China tech? And do you agree with the US concerns here? Let me know in the comments. While you're at it, subscribe to this channel to get more videos like this and check out more of my videos.